over here in state New York. And one day this guy comes in and he wants uh, the, uh, the headless sword, or the, you know, the, the head of the sword illusion. And I said, who's this guy? And he says, oh, Bobby Reynolds, greatest show in the world. I said, who? <laughs> we became instant friends. That must have been all of them in the, uh, in the late 80s, 1980s. And believe it or not, we stayed friends. And, um, and he used to stop at my farm in Schoharie, New York, on the way back from Coney Island after the end of the season. And he had all his sideshow people with him in props. And I, I was up in farm country, so I called all my farmer friends, and they would come over, and Bobby and, and uh, Frankie the Butter God, and everybody put on a show for them. So, uh, yeah, he was, he, he, uh, there was always something happening when Bobby was around. So. And he didn't live all that far away when uh, he lived in upstate New York also at the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember at the end of the season in Coney Island, we would pack that up and we would go, uh, you know, to where he was living there in uh, Nassau, in the little village of Nassau. And uh, we'd get pens to go up to Canada for him to pitch pens and I'd pitch, pitch brushes. Right. That's right. The next stop would be Canada at the Zellers. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah, remember, uh, yeah, remember coming home one day? to my farm and I see the elephant skin dog running around. I said, oh, Bobby must be here. Yeah. And then, um, it's funny, Bobby didn't stay at my farm. He would stay at the bed and breakfast a couple of miles up the road. But, uh, right before the start of the uh, Coney Island season, uh, I brought him along and I had a double boot given to me at this chocolate festival in Albany. So Bobby says, I want to pitch my uh, horn nuts. And my wife did psychic readings and uh, I tried to sell some galley decks. I think I took in like three dollars. Bobby took in five thousand dollars. Well, I, I, I was the one pitching the horn nuts at that chocolate Wait, festival. So, I, I, I put up a little, a little table at the end of your booth. Right, I remember that. And he had the fish tank with the float in it. And then, if you remember, the people that uh, did the catering there at the chocolate festival, you sold their kids a bunch, but they also ran the bed and breakfast. So Bobby stays at the uh, bed and breakfast, and the people go, you look familiar. And Bobby goes, oh, you know, I'm the greatest show. And he says, oh, wait a minute, I saw you at the chocolate festival, and we bought these horn nuts, but all he did was rot and smell. Well, you know, I was there at that time, and I told them they must have got bad ones, and I sold them more. Sure. <laughs> they got bad ones. <laughs> it, 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 it was funny. We were, that year, we were up in Canada, and we get a call from Bird, you know, his wife at the time, and she's like, you're on the 6 o'clock news as a fraud. Don't buy these. So we got out of town just in the nick of time. Right. Yeah, you doing the pen pitch, you want you know I got more than two days. I remember uh, working at Cobblesville Fair. Bobby didn't do the pen pitch, there was these other guys and they left after about two days because people the next day were coming back looking for their money back. Well you know when <clears throat> when we were in Canada at the Zeller stores you know, he was getting uh -huh. he was getting twenty bucks for a pen set and rehashing them for a, another five. He, he tacked on another five. I get all this. He, he gave me back then it's a VHS, but I transferred it to CD or, or DVD. It's um, yeah, I got the I got him doing the pen pitch at Sellers. Oh, I I, I I would love to have a copy of that. That was uh, you know, he'd rake up a few hundred dollars each pitch, and he 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 get on the the speaker there at the sellers and say, you know, the Reynolds Pet Company in the back in just a few minutes to giving away free samples or whatever you would say. And they all... Free samples and advertising premiums. Right. And, and the pen will never run out of it because just send this coupon and we'll send you a, a refill. That's right. That's and right. The coupon, it was like a bogus address. <laughs> No, it was a real address, but we charged them shipping and handling, so it was like the $8 shipping and handling. It 
legitimate. Yeah. It was well, like $8. dollars you think that's legitimate? Yeah, no, we, it was like $8 for the shipping and handling, and they would get the little, a new little refill <laughs> tube that cost three cents. And you cost you 20 cents to mail it? You may not get Yeah, you know, it was good. You having a good time at the convention, Bobby? Oh, yeah. I'm awake. Yeah. Bob, what are you doing? Getting I'm old. Where's my kids? I'm supposed to get these kids. And he winds up selling. Because <laughs> I got him on video promising me these are my kids. Ronnie and Donnie in a bit of a bond. Yeah, we, uh, we all have been promised those things. <laughs> yeah, see that? Boy, I don't know. Whatever happened to Professor Pill or Films or Pills uh, Medicine Wagon there? I stored in my barn for four years. I don't know, but you know, eventually it got finished, and um, he would book still still spots with Roy Hassett to pitch pens, and we'd bring the medicine show out, and we'll, 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 he was pitching them on the independent lot, and we'd bring the medicine show out. And I would do free shows for anyone that came into the fair. And oh, and that way Bobby got a free spot on the independent lot to pitch pens. So you wouldn't have to pay any money, you know, to 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 have a spot. Uh, and, um, we kept all kinds of things for called pottery. Oh yeah, the midget horses you had for a while and maybe the rat for a while and um, yeah, I was afraid of the rat. I, I, I said, uh, I'll pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> giant killer rat. You're a hundred pounds. No, no, I have a damn knockoff in 20 seconds. That's right, you know. Four fears in a sniper's bullet. That's right. Phone, he can hear you. If you talk, if you talk to him, he'll answer you. Yeah. What do you want to know? Um, I want to know the secret of the universe. It's all done with Christian Science and rubber bands. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know this. If um, say you're driving in your car, and if you were able to drive your car at the speed of light. Turn your headlights on, would they do anything? Yeah, they go on. But they wouldn't really do anything, right? Because you're traveling at the speed of light, so the light couldn't go beyond that. Where the hell do you get all this stuff? I, I, I'm, I'm the second grade jump. <laughs> you know, you have to be odd to be number one, right? I don't know about that. It's all done with Christian science and rubber bands. And rubber bands, and the curtain came down with a hole. Because oh, nice. uh, I was um, hungry. Did you? <laughs> oh, we met you. We met up at the restaurants, and then you doing like a tap dance on the table, and doing singing from musicals, and driving the waiters crazy, and Frankie sticking knives and forks up his nose. And oh. asking the waiters to bring the salad over. That's the way he was. Yeah, I mean, everywhere we go, we, you know, stirred up something. <laughs> it was not normal. Was there well, any time, well, anywhere? Normal? Quiet? No, it was never normal, right? No. No. It was never mundane or normal. And I remember being at, we were at Hero's Japanese restaurant. And then you sat at the hibachi table, and there's always other people there, and you're talking about, yeah, I'm just kind of right up with the two headed babies, and you're passing the article around. These people sitting there, like, have no idea what's going on. Like, what? That was two a long time ago. Yeah. 